All right, so Anna, you appeared in HBO's Winning Time about the Lakers in the 80s. Um, tell me about how you ended up getting that role and what was it like? Um, honestly, I think I got all of my mainstream roles because I was willing to be naked uh, on camera. And I'm not sure if people are just don't want that attached to their name, but my butthole's already on the internet. So, <laughs> yeah, they were like, well, do you, does anybody know anybody that's cool being naked? And I was like, me. <laughs> yeah. So it was just through from a friend of a friend. Uh, Charlotte Stokely reached out to me and her friend and made the connection happen. Um, and I was really excited because I am not currently a fan of any sports, but when I was younger, I really did like the Lakers mm -hmm. and I had worked for Starbucks and Maggie Johnson was like, he would come to the Starbucks and meet us and stuff like that. So I was like, fucking loved Magic Johnson and I like followed the Lakers parade when they won the nationals in LA, mm -hmm. broke my sandal. I was just like super about sports that year. Yeah. And then to like come full circle and be able to like fuck fake Magic Johnson, I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm proud of this one. And the guy, uh, Quincy James, I believe, he, I feel like he practiced for that because I was like, oh, don't, don't worry, I'm a professional. He's like, he, he was a professional. <laughs> Once they said action, I was like, had to look back at him like, who is this? Like, because he was so like in the rhythm, I was like, oh, I, well, you do have sex, you know, but he was, like, not shy to, like, fake fuck me. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm like, it was softcore, right? It was softcore. Yeah. I, I, I wish it wasn't, but it was <laughs> softcore. But he was just very, like, he was like, I'm not going to look like I don't know what I'm doing. I'm playing Magic Johnson, and Magic put it down. <laughs> so he was in, and I was like, wow, oh, my God, okay. Did you guys have a um, intimacy coordinator on set? We did. We definitely did. She was really cute. Um... I felt like I didn't need her, but I found out that I did because I kept walking around like it was a like a sex house. And so there were like naked people and things like that. And my character was just topless. So I was like, oh, well, I'm not offensive. I took off my robe and was walking around. They're like, do you need your robe? And I was like, no. And they're like, do you need your robe? And I'm like... <laughs> What do you mean? And I didn't realize that it's kind of like different on their set. Like they yeah. do not like nudity. And I'm like, but we're about to fake fuck, you know? Yeah. So the the intimacy coordinator was there to like make me calm down. <laughs> so she was basically there to wrangle you. Yeah. Because I was ready. I was like, oh, so what positions should we do? Like he's tall, doggy. And she's like, Anna, 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 Anna. <laughs> calm down. You know, like he's going to do, he's had his own separate talk. We're going to have your talk, you know? Uh, so I was I was pretty eager and uh, I saw like nervousness going around in the room and it was kind of cute to like, oh, yeah, this is not porn. R right. Real people don't normally just whip it out in front of strangers, yeah. you know. So, yeah, she was very useful. useful. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that she what was the talk like? Like what? I'm just so curious yeah. about how that works on a mainstream set, because I've also only ever worked on right. adult. Um, well, it was like uh, very much like our boundaries checklist. Like, what mm -hmm. are you comfortable doing? Because mm -hmm. uh, there was three of us girls and we were all originally hired to do something sexual. Mm -hmm. But one of the girls didn't really want to do that. So we changed it. And she was just kind of like the girl in the threesome that's just jacking off in the corner <laughs> kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, and kind of like uh, just establish how long everybody was willing to do this or that. Like, do you want your tits out? Is it okay if he touches them? Mm -hmm. And ki are you cool with kissing? Um, so it was just like an elementary version of our like checklist, mm. which was cute. But so it didn't go all the way to no, fisting no. or there was none facials, of that. Yeah, sperm gargling. There was none of that, and I was like, "Well, what are we gonna talk about? Like, if he gets a like, if he gets a boner, like, oh, yeah. I was curious. I was like, "Well, what if he gets a boner? Like, am I allowed to like bone on the boner? Like, you know, do we acknowledge the boner? Do we not acknowledge the boner?" He did not get a boner. He didn't get a boner. Were you a little <laughs> yeah. bit sad about that? I was a little sad, but he had, I think it's because he had the, like, dick sock. Yeah. I, so maybe it was, like, not allowing him to get boner or whatever. But Maybe it was, like, a chastity belt dick sock. Yeah. Like, it was, like, a tight one that, like, yeah. kept it down. Yeah, kind of tucked it in there. Yeah. So I couldn't tell if there was boner or no boner. But right. I, I did feel like the pervert because I really wanted to see. <laughs> I was like, we had Merkins on, and I was like, but... I have a bush. Like, you don't need to murk in my bush. It's pretty bushy. They murk in your bush? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's... 
<laughs> it feels like a saying or something like that. Like right? They, they murk in your bush. They, they overdid something <laughs> that you already had. Yeah. Double murk. Yeah. So did they just, did they give you more hair? Because I guess it was yeah. the 70s, right? Yeah. So. It was a little like minus kind of trimmed. So it was like untrimmed and like a murk and thong kind of like, so all the way to the butthole. And I was kind of like. Wait, they made. Was wait was the thong hairy? No, it's like a it's like a sticky thing. So like the stick is in the front, and then like the stick is on like above your butt crack, okay. and like it's hairy up until like like the middle part where your lips kind of end, like okay. butthole lips part. So wait, team. it's okay. So here's the bush, the beginning. Mm -hmm. Here's the undercarriage. Yeah. Is so there assume, hair, just for people who are listening, yeah. we're, we're doing a demonstration. Yeah. <laughs> How far does the Merkin bush go? It goes about there. Okay. It goes down a little bit. So all the lips are covered with hair. Oh. Yeah. Is it itchy? Kind of, because it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of hair, so yeah. it's kind of comical to me, like how much hair it was, and that everybody had one on. So it's just kind of like we all looked like Bob Ross, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a happy little dream. Yeah, that's what it felt like. <laughs> just Bob Rossing it up, you know. Oh my god, mm -hmm. I've never. I don't think I've ever seen like a Merkin in real life. They have them on Etsy. Do they? They do. <laughs> Oh my god! Maybe I should wear one for Halloween. You could, you could. I wouldn't wear that little of clothing. You could extend the Merkin. I'm sure they have <clears throat> like the internet. The I'm up. sure they do. I yeah. just stopped at Merkin, but I'm sure they have body Merks. So you actually just looked up Merkins? Yeah, I did. When they were when I got the role, like they were talking about Merkins, and I was like, I like to be prepared. So I was like, Whoa, what kind of Merkins are they? And I looked online. I was like, Wow, they really have like really good merkins like if you're nude and you want to just see what you would look like with a bush they they have lace fronts for that you know wow they do that's amazing they do oh my god <laughs> movie magic <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what i mean besides like the obvious that there was no sex what was a mainstream set like versus like a porn set and mm, in the end what do you prefer uh they're pretty similar like hurry up and wait kind of thing. Mm. Uh, I I think I definitely prefer porn over mainstream be, just because how much time it takes just to like be on set for, like your, your moment is like a minute, two minutes, and it took days for you to like go to a fitting. Oh, is your hair the right era? Like, uh, Especially a historical you, piece. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I, I had a, I had a wig on when I went for the auditions and so I went for with my wig for the fitting and then they're like oh yeah wear, wear that wig and I was like okay and I got on the set and they're like oh it's not the right it's the, not the right length and I was like well what do you mean and they're like we're gonna have to cut it and I'm like man this is this hair does cost a bj do you know how much <laughs> pretty expensive like, oh we're just gonna cut a little bit and a little bit starts off at like this and then you know it's like this and then I just had like a little cute bobby thingy but I was just like bro like I could have you could have put the merkin on your head I could have put the merkin <laughs> like I have a whole bunch of wigs I could have changed like a, a different hairstyle but yeah. they just like cut it so I was just kind of like like a little like oh motherfucker yeah this big magic johnson better be hot yeah yeah <laughs> so it's they're very similar where it's a lot of waiting uh, a lot of awkward silence like uh, there's less communication between the director and the talent, which I didn't like because mm. I'm used to just being able to walk up to the director and like, hey, boss, like, what do you need? And yeah. they're like, no, you do not talk to the director. He's he's directing. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you're like, he's eating I'm, a sandwich. What he's literally eating, eating a sandwich. It's fine. <laughs> so their rules are very similar, but different at the same time. Um, but I still like porn better. Yeah. Because I don't have to wonder what his dick looks like. I can see it. Yes. I know, right? And you don't need to merkin I don't need a merkin, yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. If you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q&As, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.